Hi everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel and a not another card making video tutorial. This is Stamp Timber and it is another exclusive limited edition today from Whimsy Stamps. This is called Spooky and Mice and it is a stamp die combo or stamp set only. It is absolutely adorable and we are going to create a Halloween scene card today using the images from the set as well as some stencils from my stash and of course some distress inks. So here's kind of the pre-plan as I'm looking at the images from the set. How do I want to design the card? I already know I want to use the Tim Holtz moon masks and distress inks to build a spooky Halloween backdrop for these little cuties. And then we're going to stamp these on Nina 110 pound weight smooth white cardstock using a alcohol ink friendly uh, or alcohol friendly ink, pardon me. I'm using intensified black from Hero Arts. I do need to stamp it a couple times. I need to re-ink my ink pad, but I wanna get a really good outline, especially for the areas that are black, the pirate eye patch, the eyes of the art images, the little bow tie, things like that. We are gonna be coloring our images in today with Olo markers. And I have been loving using Olo markers for about a year now. And they are like any alcohol ink marker mostly. Uh, I do find them very, very wonderful to use and I highly recommend them. I do have a link in the description if you're interested in picking them up. I have the colors I'm using listed down in the description as well as over on my blog. So we're going to start our coloring. I have left the coloring portion of this in the video in just the normal sped up time. So this is about a 20, 21 minute video today. And I am going to leave the coloring in. If you want, you can always fast forward past that coloring uh, if you are not interested in seeing how this goes. But I know a lot of people really enjoy the coloring. And so I wanted to make sure and leave that in today in case you're looking for some uh, Halloween color combinations. Now, as always, this is a limited edition exclusive for Simon Says Stamp, Stamp Timber 2023. If you're interested in all in the stamp or the stamp die combo, I highly recommend going over to Simon Says Stamp, pause the video, grab my link down in the description below and go purchase it and then come back and finish watching the video. I don't want anyone to miss out on things that you really love. So this is definitely what I call cute Halloween. There's spooky Halloween and then there's like spooky cute Halloween. We're going for the spooky cute with these super friendly little mice. I always make the joke anytime I have mice on a card that this is the only kind of mice I really like. I don't want real mice, <laughs> but these cute little paper mice are adorable. Full disclosure, I will be die cutting my images with the Brother Scan and Cut, not with the coordinating dies. Um, I didn't have them in time for filming this video, so I am going to make do. If you notice that the die lines or the cut lines are maybe not the same as yours when you get the dies at home, that is why. So I always like to let you guys know just so you're not wondering why your die cutting maybe doesn't look like mine. I did end up using the same color combination for all of my mice, but I did my pumpkins in two different color combos. I recommend just taking your time with the coloring and having fun with it. Olo Markers do recommend Express It cardstock and I do have it and use it, but here is why I'm using Nina. Nina is my favorite cardstock for alcohol ink coloring and I used the recommended cardstock at first because I wanted to get used to the markers and I still use it sometimes. What I love about Nina is that it is thicker. So when it's die cut, I feel like my, my um, die cut images have a little bit more uh, of a, just a little bit more substance to them, I guess. Uh, not quite so flimsy. And so often that is why I choose this paper over others because I like it to be a little thicker. So we have a little mummy wrapped mouse. We have a pirate. I just think the pirate's adorable. Uh, the pumpkin or the pumpkin, the mouse hiding in the pumpkin and a vampire mouse 
even with cute little fangs. I guess if fangs can be considered cute. So little pink cheeks on the mice as well because these are paper mice. We can color them however we want. There are no rules here. I absolutely love just kind of having fun with it. I often will choose either browns or grays for mice. And I could have done all of these in different color combos, but I really kept it super simple and just did the same color combination for all of these little guys. What I'm doing is laying down my light color and then blending in my darker color. I would want to caution you that don't oversaturate the paper, and this goes for any alcohol ink coloring, especially with reds, deep oranges, dark purples, blues. They may bleed outside the lines if you oversaturate your blending way too much. So I often will lay down the color and move on to something else and then come back and do my blending. So you're gonna see that quite a bit. Like I filled in the, or the inside of the ears and now I'm kind of doing a base layer on my mice. I did my little, what I call prototype mouse and I decided I like that color combo so we're just gonna kind of continue with that. And then you can see I forgot, forgot the mouse in the pumpkin. So I'll have to come back and grab him here in a little bit. You'll have to let me know down in the comments if you use a Brother Scan and Cut or if you prefer the dies. I know that some people love the Scan and Cut. It doesn't cut the same, I mean, it, it can cut similar, but it's not gonna leave that kind of rounded-ish edge, is that what I wanna call it, that our traditional dies will do. So if that bothers you at all, definitely stick with the coordinating dies or fussy cutting. Now, I know I mention all the time here on my channel, fussy cutting is not my favorite. I've done it a couple times here recently and it's okay. Um, I probably wouldn't fussy cut these guys. Uh, I would more likely mask an ink blend around them um, rather than than fussy cut just because of all of the little ins and outs, the little tails on the mot the mice. I don't feel like my cutting skills are are good enough to cut them out and do them justice. I know a lot of you are. A lot of you are fantastic fussy cutters and absolutely love it and swear by it. It is just not my jam. As I am blending in my darker colors, I'm going to then blend out, especially in the face. I feel like the face is the focal point on each of these little critters. If the insides of the ear, you may notice me pulling in some of my uh, brown neutral shade into the ear. I do that to mute the pink. I, I, it warms it up a little bit, I guess, is what I wanna say, so it's not quite so harsh. And here we're gonna fill in our final little mouse. Now, building a background scene can be as complex or as simple as you want it to be. We're gonna go what I probably would call more on the simple side, just that there's not tons and tons of layers. However, we're gonna make the most bang for our buck, if you will, with the background we're building today. It's all gonna be a single layer but we're gonna have moon, clouds, uh, ink blended sky, distress mica stain splatter, and even like the silhouette of grass along the bottom edge. So we've kind of got it all today, but it's all on a single layer. It's not multiple layers of cardstock. Uh, it's not lots and lots of die cutting or lots of layers or anything like that. It keeps it all contained and I love how that looks. It's also much easier to mail than um, a card that has tons of layers. I love both, but I think it's always fun to, I guess I consider it a challenge to see how much layering and how much dimension I can achieve with just a single, um, which is a single layer of card. You guys let me know, do you like scene cards? I 
I'm kind of known for creating scene cards. They are one of the things I love to make. I love making all cards, but I definitely love scenes. And I always talk about the story. So if you need help when you're designing a scene card, tell yourself a story. To me, these little mice are either out in the field, out in the grass, whatever. On a Halloween night, we want to have a spooky sky and they're out trick-or-treating. Almost like a cartoon, I suppose, if you will, um, since they're all dressed up and, you know, m mice, at least the, the mice I, I have been familiar with, <laughs> uh, don't, don't dress up in Halloween costumes. So tell yourself a story. To me, they're out trick-or-treating. They're out getting ready for trick-or-treating. Uh, it's Halloween night. We have a spooky sky. And how can we achieve that to tell our story? Oh my goodness, aren't they cute? Okay, I'm gonna run. I know you guys won't even miss me and use my scan and cut and I'll be right back and we are going to build a background. So on a four and a quarter by five and a half inch background of smooth white cardstock, we are going to start with our solid moon mask. And we are going to blend around this just to kind of get the glow of our moon with speckled eggshell distress oxide ink, just a little bit. Uh, just going around the edge. I have a certain set of blending brushes for distress oxides, and then I have other brushes for dye inks. Then we're gonna remove the mask and we're gonna do a nice, whatever's left on the blending brush, layer of speckled egg. I said eggshell, I meant speckled egg for the moon itself. So the moon is gonna be that beautiful light blue. Then we're going to ink blend all around the moon, starting up at the top with chipped sapphire. We're gonna do a nice blend, keeping the moon mask in place as we need it. And then we're gonna take some seedless preserves and we're gonna build this, this blue violet sky. Mm, this ink pad's nice and juicy. So I'm going to blend those inks together. Kind of just take that all the way down to the bottom. Now the magic is the black soot distress oxide. If you haven't been here before, I always talk about black soot is like magic. It gives it a dark moody feel that is absolutely amazing. Now, before I use the black soot, I do want to make sure that I get a beautiful seamless blend of chip sapphire and seedless preserves. And I can even pull some of that dark color into the moon. It naturally gives the moon some character before we ever add our moon mask. I'm even going to take some more chip sapphire and add that layer in. And that looks amazing. So to me, this just softens the edges of the moon by doing it this way. So we still have the definition, but it's just a little softer. Now we have our black soot, as I mentioned, and we're gonna bring this basically all the way around the perimeter of our background. Pulling it in, it instantly adds the perfect moody night sky. I'm not going to go clean up my moon mask, the solid mask, just yet. I still need it for a minute. So let me clean up my work surface because I don't want to transfer this ink in the next step. We're going to put our moon mask back in place. We're going to grab our favorite cloud stencil, uh, whatever you may have. I have tons here. I'm going to use my glass mat as a palette and I'm going to press some white pigment ink into my mat. Then I'm using the Lawn Fawn Cloudy Stencil and I'm going to tilt it this way and that, creating stenciled clouds in the sky. Look how gorgeous these clouds are over our ink blended background. It softens it even more and just adds the most amazing texture. No matter what kind of card you're creating, how amazing would this background be? So once we have our clouds, I again, I'm going to leave my, my moon mask. I don't really need it for this step, but we're gonna leave it anyway. I am using a grassy stencil from Lawn Fawn, and I'm going to go back with Black Sit Distress Oxide and do a heavier blend along the bottom edge to give a silhouette of grass along the bottom. Now our background scene is almost complete. The final thing I wanna do here is add even more interest 
two hour background. Um, I'm going to flip the grassy stencil because I need masks at this, at this point, not necessarily stencils. So I'm using the other side of the stencil to mask off the grass. I have my moon mask in place. Oh, and I am using the medium moon mask today. And we are gonna grab some Distress Mica Stains. I have some Phantom Fog, I believe is what it's called. I might be wrong about that, and Hocus Pocus. Uh, the exact colors are listed down below. Maybe I'll show them here. I forgot to look before I started my voiceover. And we're gonna do a little spritzeroo over our background to give it some sparkle and shine. I know I've mentioned this many times, I cannot get enough of the amazing, amazing texture the Distress Mica Stains add. I want to use them on everything. I love them so much. So now that our background is completely dry, it's time to put it all together. I am going to take a, gl a black glaze pen and add detail to the eyes. Now when you do this, how I'm doing it, and the noses, I am losing the little white highlight. I will go back when the black is completely dry and add the highlight back in. I'm adding little white dots to the cheeks, highlights to some parts of the images. I'm not going to go super highlight crazy here, but just a little bit here and there. And then we're going to back all of our cute images with some foam and pop them up on our card along the bottom edge. Now, the great thing about the Spooky and My stamp set, it comes with tons of additional little like candy images, which are really fun, and lots and lots of sentiments. We're going to use quite a few of the sentiments from the stamp set in a couple of different ways. We're going to combine two of them for our actual card greeting, if you will, and then the rest are going to be part of the scene, kind of almost like thought bubbles or speech bubbles, even though I didn't go find a speech bubble die to use with them. We want to layer our images to give it the most natural kind of effect, I guess. So here I am layering my mummy and the pumpkin kind of in the center. And then our pirate will be over on the left side, our vampire over on the right, and we'll layer the little pumpkin uh, on top of the big one. Look how sweet this little scene card is. The colors are so fun. I love the blues and purples with the orange of the pumpkins. Now I am going to stamp eek, squeak, and arg, like pirate talk. That wasn't very good, sorry. On black card stock with an embossing ink and heat emboss with white embossing powder. My thought here is that we have lots of room still on our card. Now, that doesn't mean we need to fill the whole thing up, but I feel like our card would benefit from a few little greetings. So I am going to line up hello boo and bring on the candy, kind of stacking them. Those sentiments are going to be stamped in black ink on the moon. And then that black card stock underneath, that's where we're going to stamp some of our little phrases, like little speech bubble type phrases that our mice are saying. And we are going to um, stamp and boss, die cut with some sentiment label dies, and then pop up above our mice heads. So let's grab those. I love the little hello boo and bring on the candy. So much fun. I think these little guys would make absolutely adorable gift tags too. If you saw my pink and main video from a couple of days ago, I think you would, um, I think these would be cute in those little snow globes, like to do little individual Halloween tags. Maybe you put them on little bags of candy or whatever. So here are my little greetings, popping them up with foam. I'm gonna tilt them kind of at angles. I think that's kind of fun. I like the little imperfection of it. 
And then finally, again, we still have kind of a lot of room and I feel like it needs balanced. And if you've seen any of my Halloween videos, I always say this, I, I think a, you can't go wrong with a bat. So I grab some pretty pink posh, um, some confetti, and I grab the one with little black bats in it. And we're going to do a trio of black bats here up in the sky over the moon. And it balances the entire card out perfectly uh, and finishes it off. Absolutely loving it. So hopefully this card has inspired you to uh, play with your markers, play with your inks, all of the good stuff. My goal with my Stamp Timber videos is always to inspire. And yes, if you wanna pick up the new stamp sets or stamps and dies, that's awesome. But hopefully it inspires you to play with your supplies. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for the Whimsy Stamps Spooky or Mice Limited Edition Exclusive for Stamp Timber 2023. The supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me today for another paper crafting tutorial. I love being able to share with this incredible community of crafters. I want to give a huge shout out and special thank you to my amazing Patreon members. If you're interested in joining Patreon, please click the link in the description underneath the video here on YouTube. Patreon is a private community where you can support more of what I do. There is exclusive content, information, and behind the scenes content. Top tier members will receive a handmade birthday card during your birthday month, access to DStash, and monthly exclusive lives, plus so much more. We would love to have you join our growing community. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, hit that like button, and don't forget to click the notification bell to always be notified when there is a new video or I go live. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you again next time.